Hello, my name is Ken Wright. In this presentation, we're going to review a few of the things we've already talked about in previous presentations. But we're going to draw some distinctions between science, mainstream science, and theology. And I'll throw in a few definitions. For example, what is science? Well, according to the dictionary, Science is knowledge about the natural world based on discovered facts, learned through experiments and observation. So how are the discovered facts obtained? Well, it's through a process called the scientific method. And what is that? You ask a question. You do some research to find out who else is asking the same question. You develop a hypothesis. You make a prediction. You create an experiment to test your prediction. You analyze your data. You make adjustments and retest as often as necessary. You submit the results for peer review. You publish your results. This is the basic method of science, and it's a good method. Well, what is a scientific theory? A theory is a hypothetical explanation of the discovered facts. And hypothetical is the key word here. You have your discovered facts. You have your explanation. But the explanation of the facts is always based on a philosophical concept called naturalism. And what is naturalism? It's a theory denying that an event or object has a supernatural significance. Again, right out of the dictionary. Well, the meaning of this is God is not allowed. Not in science. The problem is there are frequently conflicts between the discovered facts and the explanation of the facts. And so, there tends to be a divide in science. I'll mention just one example. Both of these from very, very good scientists. Somebody has fine-tuned nature's numbers to make the universe. The impression of design is overwhelming. This from Paul Davies. Well, the explanation of this obvious and overwhelming design is the multiverse. The universe can and will create itself from nothing. It is not necessary to invoke God, according to Stephen Hawking. That's because universes are just creating themselves all the time. They're all over the place. And ours just happened to be the one that by accident got the numbers right. God didn't do it. Well, the problem with his explanation that there's absolutely no evidence that universes can and will create themselves from nothing. Well, these theories are like marbles in a bowl. They're all different colors, but you're only allowed to pick the red ones. That is mainstream science. Clearly, there can be more than one theory for the same facts. But mainstream theory is the theory that the majority of scientists buy into. Well, why is this? Mainstream is where the jobs are. Scientists and teachers and others that associate themselves with science are people. They tend to get married, have kids, buy houses, have mortgages. They need jobs. Mainstream is what is taught in the schools and universities. And so kids coming out of the schools and going into science are going to go where the jobs are and they're going to teach what they've been taught. Mainstream is where research grants and funding are directed. This is important. If you're going to do research, you need money. Mainstream is what publishers want in their publications. 
So if you're a professor and you want to publish, you'll publish what the publishers want. This from Newsweek magazine. Textbooks present science as a noble search for truth. But for many scientists, this is a cruel myth. They know that disagreeing with the dominant view is dangerous, especially when that view is backed by powerful interest groups. Well, okay, where does theology come into this? Is there really a war between science and theology? Well, I don't think so. Not true science. Science is the discovery of natural laws through the scientific method. Theology is the discovery of spiritual laws through revelation and personal experience. There are rules. If you're unwilling to apply the rules, you will not obtain the desired results. And one of the basic rules of the scientific method is that other scientists need to be able to duplicate your experience, your discovery, in their own laboratories. Well, there are rules for theology as well. If you are unwilling to apply the rules, you will not obtain the desired results. And the rules were given through prophets and through revelation. And the rules, if followed, will produce results that anybody following the rules will be able to duplicate. Well, the basic premise of these presentations is that there is more than sufficient evidence that a creative intelligence is responsible for the wonders of our universe. But naturalism prevents this from even being discussed, let alone taught in our schools. Well, the universe is a very big place. And indeed, half of it lends itself to the discoveries of science through the scientific method. But the other half lends itself to the discoveries of theology through the theological method as revealed by the Lord God through his prophets. But this is not being taught in our schools. And so our young people are only getting one half of the story. Consequently, many of our young people are abandoning the religion of their upbringing. Today, nearly a third of our youngest age group is totally unaffiliated with religion. 